Hello and welcome to my first episode back in my modern day. Before we start this episode, let's play a little bit of a guessing game. I'm going to try my best to describe to you an object. And you have to guess what it is. I'm going to describe to you an object that you can hold in the palm of your hand, but it's not a smartphone. Um, it has 12, num 10 number buttons, including two extra buttons for star and pound, four arrow buttons, an enter button, and four corner buttons. The layout is similar to a flip phone, but it's not a flip phone. It can talk, but it's not a fancy computer or talking watch. Give up? It's a book player, but not just any book player. A book player for the blind. You see, back in our normal day, back in our modern day, this used to be our most convenient way before smartphones and tablets that we could take along books, num big numbers of books, including audio and books written in text format, including Microsoft Word or specialized audio or text format books known as Daisy. Because the thing is, is that Braille was Braille was bulky, and cassette tapes were kind of a pain to navigate when you wanted to go to a specific page or a specific chapter, things like that. There were ways to do it, such as pressing an index, if the narrator pressed an index button to navigate portions of the tape as chapters, but then you would have to use a fe you would have to use a feature called audio rewind or audio fast forward which basically meant that as the tape was being rewound or fast forward the tape of the audio of the tape would be played at the same speed of which it was being rewound or fast forward which sounded pretty weird and you would have to sit there and listen for the beeps to let you know what chapter or page you were on and depending on how many beeps you heard in a row might determine if this is a chapter or a sub a subheading or a page or things like that. But then Daisy came along and people started inventing machines that could play Daisy. For example, there were specialized just like there were specialized tape players, there were specialized CD players. They could play your your standard C audio CDs with music or standard audiobooks, but they could also play CDs that had Daisy books on them. So those were pretty neat. But then those got kind of thick, be a little bulky at times. And plus, there is the added concern of damage possible damage that could be done to your CD, and then there you go. And then as the times changed and the way, you know, how it goes, things started getting digital. iPods, MP3 players, and all of that stuff. And the blindness community, we started doing our own stuff, too, with digital technology. I can remember having a teacher that was blind, and she had this nifty little device that I envied so bad and it was called the book port, and basically you loaded your, your stuff onto a memory card, and you stuck it into this little device that was so small it could fit in your pocket. And then there goes your library of books. Not just books, but, you know, MP3s and things like that. It was pretty nifty for the times that this was in 2003. And then in 2009, skip a forward a few years, we keep coming out with these different machines. And then 2009, the 
libraries for the blind in America, they started doing their own thing and they started providing talking books, digital talking books that could be either downloaded or played on cartridges through either their machines or the machines that you would buy from the store, well, not from the store, but from whatever dealers, blindness specific dealers had them. For example, there was the Victor Stream, which was pretty nice. And then there was the Plex Talk and the Book Sense. So, yep. Yeah. We had our own things. They could not just, I mean, they didn't just play books. It was kind of like having a blind-friendly iPod, but a little bit more expensive. You could, it could play books. It could play music. It could play, if you put on, if you had podcasts, some of them could connect to the internet. And if you put on a file, if you put a file on your memory card or directly onto the device with your list of favorite podcasts, it would download them for you if it was connected to Wi-Fi. And the same goes if you uploaded a playlist of all your radio stations to the device, you could play web radio to it. Some of them, you don't have to do that. You can listen, you can access the internet directly on the device. You don't have to preemptively give it a thing or a list of um a list of websites or a list of radio stations some are different hardware wise some are different software wise but basically these things were the best thing to have before the smartphone slash tablet age if you were blind or visually impaired a little small device the size of a slip a so the size of a, a flip phone that you could throw into a purse or wallet that had a whole library of books, of your books that you wanted to read, plus an MP3 player for your music and podcasts. 